Hi everyone, I'm Hunter Mulford and welcome to our very first live segment of Life Tomorrow. I'm joined by Arka Bala, who is the CEO and co-founder of Context Grid. So thank you so much for being here. No worries, glad to be here. Yeah, so we're really excited. We're reporting live from the Bowery for the Karma Network. And recently there's been a lot of buzz about augmented reality. And Arca is creating this platform that really is allowing augmented reality to blossom even more. So can you tell the viewers what is Context Grid and what do you do? Sure. So to explain what Context Grid is, um, I should ask you a question first. So imagine if you had to walk into JFK Airport and you're wearing a Microsoft HoloLens, which is a augmented reality glasses, goes over your eyes and puts up holograms. So you're wearing this amazing augmented reality glasses, right? And right. you walk into JFK Airport, you wouldn't be able to see anything through those glasses because there's no data in the physical world that surround us for the HoloLens to read and show you something. Right. So Context Grid is solving that problem by putting data in the physical world so when you walk into JFK Airport now wearing Microsoft HoloLens, there'll be all these holograms popping up, maybe somebody will help you get to you to the airport gate by drawing arrows on the floor, you'll know exactly where your check-in desk is, you might just like point at things and click and you'll be checked in. Right. So without data in the physical world, uh, the, any augmented reality device, your phone uh, with augmented reality app, won't be able to read anything and, and do anything with it. So we're creating data everywhere, so augmented reality could be everywhere. Right, and you're really filling this gap in the tech space, but how did you even come up with this idea? Like, were you really walking through the airport and you were like, we need something, something's missing, or how did you come up with it? So initially, we last year, we were working on this idea where we had um, this Internet of Things and data sets coming from that. Um, needed to be mashed up and uh, made sense of. Right. And since then, we started working on that, and then we realized this problem with augmented reality. Um, in fact, there was a deployment of beacons and data in, in Gatwick Airport in London, mm -hmm. where one of the visions was to have augmented reality to browse certain things. Right. And, uh, but they weren't doing it the right way, where they didn't think of putting data everywhere in the world. They were only looking at Gatwick Airport, and it'll only be closed off to the Gatwick Airport app. So our vision is to have data everywhere in the world. So it won't be just in a one airport. It'll be walk, you walking down the street. You'll have things popping up, helping you. Um, and uh, yeah, and that's, right. that's when it was born. And are these? Could you explain to everyone what a beacon actually is? Sure. So a beacon is a way for. Um, your augmented reality glasses or your phone to identify where exactly in the 3D space is an object. Mm -hmm. Because if you walk if you're indoors, um, GPS doesn't work. Right. So you need, uh, and not only that, is GPS isn't accurate enough to pinpoint that you're sitting right there. And I'll, uh, or if I want to put up like a banner next to you, how do I know the banner is there? So to have indoor positioning and to have, do it in a really accurate way, you need these guys. So if I put three on this table, it's sending signals to each other constantly, right? right. And uh, if I'm in the middle, if my phone is in the middle, uh -huh. it can triangulate the amount of time it takes between the three to figure out exactly where you are. Wow. <laughs> yeah. Okay, so you that's don't need amazing. GPS. It's way more accurate. Some of the new beacons we're working with will work up to an inch, whereas GPS is like a couple of meters, right? So it can, and not only that, put you in a tall building or indoors in one way. Right, mm -hmm. so Context Grid is creating this data infra infrastructure that's putting digital context in precise locations. Where yes. do you currently have data in place? So right now, we've got uh, data in place at the uh, trunk office. Right, in, which we're loving having. Yes, yes, yes. And uh, I believe you've installed the app, the World Browser app. Yes. And um, in, um, if you go to the trunk office right now, you'll be able to walk around and see, oh, there's the pantry. And if it's empty, I can order some coffee. Right. Right, with the press button. Or you, you'll be able to go up to a room and see who's occupying that room. Again, by, in real time, because we, so these things not just tell you where you are, but also records sort of where people are, so it's, right. that's sending data back to our servers, 
So as an organization, I might want to find out what is the footfall, who's occupying this room right now, where are people getting stuck. So all that data comes back to them and they can run analytics on it and really de redesign the products based, based on that. Amazing. And then even in an office space, like you were saying, you can hold up the phone and know who's in which room, yep. right? Is yep. What other applications do you see it holding in an office space? You could book a meeting room. You could just hold it up to that uh, meeting room and see, okay, it's empty, I want to book it. Uh, you might want to see where you've just printed your uh, page to and right. uh, where is that printer. If it's run out of paper, I just press the button and it's there. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Paper and car. like you said, the goal would be for the data to be in place virtually everywhere and anywhere, but are there limitations on this? Or could you really install it everywhere and allow for these AR experiences? So that's why this idea is so big, because right. it can be literally everything. Anything you can think of. This light here, maybe you want to turn it on and off, it's smart, right? Why do I need to go to a switch and do something, right? It could be this, uh, the traffic light, it could be that restaurant over there. Any object into any granularity could have data about it. And with Internet of Things coming in, um, there's going to be billions and billions of, of these things everywhere. Wow. Which will need, to, you know, you would want to interact with those things, right? Not right. everyone would want to. Maybe there's, you're a security firm and, you know, you're doing some kind of maintenance in an office. Right. And you want to look at some kind of uh, circuit board or you want to maintain some switch. Could be even a plant. Right. You know, have I watered the plant? <laughs> <laughs> you know, that, that's the data, right? Yeah. What, what kind of fertilizer does an office plant need? So all those things, the monitors could be placed in a plant which can tell, does the plant need a, more watering? And, wow. and the maintenance guy will know exactly where that plant is and will water that plant and not something else. So it could literally be anything and it could be billions, hundreds of billions of things that would require this data. Wow, so really the possibilities are endless. <laughs> yep. And how do you see it being accessible to the everyday person? Do you see it with a phone mainly, or like you mentioned, the glasses? How do you see it working for just the every day-to-day -day person? So right now, the most um, biggest augmented reality platform is the iPhone. Right. Apple just released a new uh, software product called the Augmented Reality Kit. Yes. And that's made Apple the biggest AR platform in the world. Mm -hmm. So right now your, your phone is your best augmented reality device, but there's companies like uh, Microsoft HoloLens, Microsoft Creating HoloLens, and the world's hottest startup is actually a startup called Magic Leap. Right, right, yeah. It's, it's, it's just raised $797 million, which is ridiculous. Wow. Uh, largest C round in history. And wow. uh, so that's the world's hottest startup, and this is exactly what they're doing. They're creating a new uh, lens which can uh, overlay um, augmented reality much more naturally. And, be, and initially, right now, the glasses are about this big, but soon it'll fit in your Ray-Ban. Wow. So everyone will be, you know, every time you want an AR experience, just put your glasses on, walk down the road, and you'll be able to see aliens coming down from I mean, the skies crazy. or... Uh, <laughs> 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 or a billboard. <laughs> what are we into? <laughs> and back to the yeah. AR kit, do you see yourself either collaborating with them or how do you see yourself separating from them? No, so initially uh, we are working on our, um, you know, we're kind of creating the world browser right now. Right. But that's not what we do. We're, we've created it to be able to showcase the technology and to make people easy, uh, make it easier for other people to jump on our platform. Okay. And um, but eventually we see World Browser being taken up by Google and Apple, and getting integrated into Google Maps or their web browser itself. Oh wow! Yeah. So that that's what's. Well, you heard it first here on Life Tomorrow. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Amazing. New world. <laughs> and Context Grid is really so revolutionary on its own, but it does allow for growth in terms of artificial intelligence. How do you see Context Grid incorporating AI down the line? So the first step towards our AI would be um, we're looking into computer vision. Oh, wow. So instead of needing these guys, if, if you didn't have one of these, how do I put data on, say, on this object or any object, like okay. on you even, right? Uh, the way to do it is you take a video of a 3D object, and then you, we, with us, you can turn it into a machine learning algorithm, 
and it's used the same technology as self-driving cars almost. Oh wow. So this is like proper AI, deep neural networks, you know, the whole shebang. And that gets downloaded onto your phone and the AI in your phone will recognize this is Hunter or this is a bus or that's, this is a coffee maker and it'll overlay information on top of it. So that's our first foray into AI. Okay. But eventually uh, AI will be embedded into everything. So every object will have certain clever things to talk to you about, you know? Wow. And uh, that will also be done by putting data in the physical world, which will come by us. So the world's getting cleverer. And, right, and so it's the AR, future. then the AI, and mm -hmm. I mean, what else do you think the future holds for context gray? I mean, you name it. <laughs> any, 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 any object will require this, you know, even if you right. get, Say if you're in a spaceship in Mars, right? And, and you're, you've, you've got this big alarm thing going off and it's like, you have to find this <laughs> one little circuit board that you have replaced to right, save the ship right. from blowing up. And this ship you will have, have a lot of circuit boards. <laughs> it's right. a spaceship to Mars, right? <laughs> <laughs> so here you are wearing your, you know, without your augmented reality glasses and context red, you wouldn't be able to find this circuit board. Get lost. Exactly. Whereas now you can put this glasses on Boom, there's a circuit board, change it, alarm goes off, you get to Mars. Done. <laughs> How do yeah. people find out more about you and Context Grid? So we're kind of in uh, private beta at the moment. We're only selecting only certain partners to work with us. And uh, we're on contextgrid.com. So you, you can find out more information on that. Thank you so much, Arka. So you can check them out at contextgrid.com and follow us at the Karma Network and me at Hunter Mulford. It has been such a pleasure. Thank you. And we will see you next time at Life Tomorrow. Tune in at 1 p.m. today.